Well, hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and next to me here, this is the R2 from Robo. And this isn't a review, but I figured I should give you my first impressions of this machine because I've printed some things with it and I've had a lot of questions about it. So let's get started. First, how did I get this machine? Braden from Robo, president of Robo, came to my house, brought this machine, and we unboxed it live on a stream. And then he left it with me and said, do your worst, give us an honest opinion, don't hold back. And that's important, and I'll discuss why later. Let's first talk about the things that I, I like about this machine. Uh, it's solid. This machine is solid metal under its plastic housing. It's very sturdy, it's very rigid. If you throw it at someone, it's going to hurt them immensely. You can also wirelessly print to this because it's an OctoPrint server. It's got a Raspberry Pi in there, and from an app or from a website, you can print to the Robo R2. Inside the Robo is a camera, so you can keep track of your prints as they're printing, or you can record time lapses using the OctoPrint installation. The R2 has a build volume similar to the total volume of the Prusa i3 Mark II and the kinematics up top with the dual bar for X and the dual bar for Y are similar to the Zortrax M200 and M300 machines. The bed inside the R2 is a sanded PEI surface and it's heated and it's removable. Thank you, Josh. The bed itself is heated and it's very solid in construction and on the back are these little pads and over here there are terminals that they set onto and then that's what communicates to the bed and heats it up. The R2 also gives you automatic bed leveling once you set the nozzle height to the bed. You know we have all these prints in front of me, let's talk about these. The purple was the Kalido PLA, this was 3D Fuels A PLA and this blue is the Robo PLA. I just did PLA for now. The Robo uh, team really likes rafts and everything they print, they, they want to print with rafts. Usually the raft separates easily and you can remove it from the piece and still have your poop emoji cookie cutter turn out just fine. While raft removal wasn't an issue with this device, printing with PLA, I did find that the example prints in the memory of the R2 did leave, well, something to be desired. This, I don't even remember what this was, but it's an example print and it is encased in its own support using Robo PLA and it cannot be removed. Essentially, this is now a uh, garbage. I did print the Maker's Muse tolerance test. Let's see how this turns out. The raft came off incredibly easy. The middle one is free and it looks like we are free at 0.3 and 0.2 is not. So without calibrating the printer and just using default print settings, I was able to print the Maker's Muse tolerance test down to 0.3 millimeter. And that kind of gives me an idea because I also tried to print the Nautilus gears. And while this piece fits into the gear just fine, the piece that's supposed to tie these bars together do not fit into each other and the tolerance isn't right. So I think with more calibration and more fine tuning, I could make the bars in the Nautilus gear work and I could probably get 0.2 to be free. That's not to say all tolerance on this machine was bad. This is an example print on the printer's memory and I was able to screw the cap into the top just fine. It also looks snazzy. And this Creative Tools bottle, its cap worked as well. So even though the tolerance isn't exact enough for a small piece, it was still able to print things that fit into each other. One of the issues I did run into is this layer shifting. And it's just, it's horrible. You look at this model and this is the Moon City, I think, or something. I'll put a link down in the description. But the Moon City itself, for the most part, looks pretty good. But uh, this horrific shifting essentially ruined the model. This uh, My Little Pony uh, unicorn by my buddy 3D printed Aspie, of course, experienced some layer shifting as well. And it's catastrophic and I did have to kill the print. I did run into an issue though with prints where 
it wouldn't print well. It was stuttering or just clicking. This is with the APLA here from 3D Fuel. Here's the Game of Thrones dragon and you can see it on the wings here that it's still, it's still for the most part sturdy, but <laughs> as you can see, the wing just, it, well, it broke off and that's because of this skipping and this stuttering and this horrible clicking noise that the printer was making while it was printing this. And it turned out to be temperature related. This filament I was printing on the Robo R2 originally at 205 degrees centigrade and I thought that would be fine for the PLA. I printed it at 201C on my GMAX printer. 205 didn't work on the R2. 215 didn't work. 225 didn't work. I eventually set the printer to print this PLA at 235C and it printed this rocket just fine and it printed that rocket just fine. And it looks like even at a higher temperature, the raft comes off. The raft comes off. The raft. For the most part, the raft comes off. Print quality is decent, but I do notice on all prints there is this texture and it's hard to describe, but on close-ups, you can definitely see it. You can even see it on this birdhouse. And talking to Robo, I did find that they knew about this, and they said that it's a problem with the resistors on the stepper drivers, and they are going to address it. It's good to know. One of the things that really threw me for a loop on this machine was the cooling and how insufficient it is. This birdhouse is an example model on the printer's memory and it's supposed to print out as an example, as a demonstration of what this printer is able to do. But if you look at all these underhangs, they're atrocious. It's as if the printer just couldn't cool the filament fast enough. I'm able to take off the raft just fine, but the underside of that model and, and that curve up just looks terrible. I did talk to Braden. Braden did say that they knew about this and they were going to be outfitting the R2s with a new fan shroud. He sent me the model for the Fran Shroud and I will print that out and I will mount that on the machine at some point in the near future. But the Benchy looked good and Benchies should look good. And my Maker Coin, it looked good because my Maker Coin should look good. This little test thing looked good. For the most part, it looked like this printer really wanted to print well. It just couldn't. It couldn't get all the way. And we're working on it. And I'm hoping that a new Fan Shroud will help I'm hoping that I can talk to Robo about the temperature inconsistencies when printing this filament. I'm hoping that I can reduce the clicking and get some more quality prints out of non-Robo PLA. So if we're continuing with things that I need to see changed or that I didn't like, the touch screen doesn't register all touches to it. I had about a 60% success rate when navigating the menus on the touch screen. You can also print from the web interface or you can print from the app but the app is only available on iOS devices. The Android app still is not available for this printer, even though it's been out long enough. The app for Android should have shipped at the same time as the app for iOS. And being in software for 20 years, I know that's a possible thing and it should have been done. And finally, the power brick on this machine is louder than the printer itself. The power brick has, well, a loud fan on it. Here, let me show you. So here's the power brick, and that's the fan going. The solution, of course, is to get a power brick that doesn't have a fan in it or has a quieter fan. And in talking with Braden, he said, hey, we're getting new power bricks. Let me send you one. And he sent me one. And if you look at this power brick, there's no fan. So it should be, I would imagine, silent. And of course, I will install this and use this going forward. Well, in the end of this first impressions video, the machine really has a lot going for it, and it has a lot of potential. It's like a kid in high school who's pulling a C average, but this kid you know is a genius deep down inside, and it just takes the right teacher and the right motivation to get that kid to boost his grades and to graduate with a higher GPA. So I think that's what we have. We have ourselves a high school student that's not quite motivated, and we just need to get him on the right track. Plus, I really feel like Robo is trying extra hard with this R2. It I just feels different about it. I remember when the R1 Plus was out, it didn't feel like there was as much oomph behind it. There wasn't as much 
corporate just drive behind it. The R2 feels different, and I think it's different in a good way. I think we're going to see a much more active and responsive robo company to any of the issues that come up with this machine, and they're going to want to mitigate and fix these issues as soon as possible. And finally, I know there's been some shipping issues with this machine. I've, I've seen a couple people on Twitter show off boxes that have just been handled as if no one cared what was inside. And I don't know what the fix for a shipping company is, but I know that Robo really needs to get that under control. They may have already done it, I just don't know. This was hand delivered by the president. I didn't have to incur the wrath of any shipping company not liking the box that this was in. All right, well, that's it. You know, this is like my first impression of the machine. And I think it has potential. I think it just needs to do better. And I think it's going to do better. I think it's going to take Robo itself putting some fixes out for the machine. And it's going to take some fine tuning of the profiles. And I think, I think we're going to have ourselves a really good shot at being a winner here. I really believe that. It's just gonna take a little bit to get there. I think that the release of this machine was premature. I think that this machine and the development process should have baked for another three months before it came out and got into the hands of people. That is my software experience. That is not my hardware and manufacturing experience speaking. So if you don't agree with me, that's great. Let me know in the comments why. All right, I gotta get to printing because there's a lot more filaments to try with this machine. I gotta print a new fan shroud, I gotta install that new power brick, and I gotta send a bunch more stuff up to Octoprint to keep this machine printing 24 seven. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to ring that bell. A big thanks to everybody that supports me via Patreon, via YouTube Red, and for everybody that lets the ads play. And finally, don't forget to hug each other more because I love you guys. As always, vases are cool and high five.